Well, everyone knew it was coming, and for days the advance billing claimed it would be tough and highly critical. But when today's Auditor General's report on the multi-billion dollar F-35 program was finally made public, it still caused quite the furor. Even to the point where one opposition leader suggested the Prime Minister should resign. We have extensive coverage on this story, starting in Ottawa. And our senior correspondent, Terry Malefsky. Terry. Well, Peter, this report hits the government very hard. The Auditor General is too polite to call anyone a liar, so he just says they didn't tell the truth about a $25 billion project that's going off the rails. National Defence did not exercise the diligence that would be expected in managing a $25 billion commitment. The Auditor General did not take his knife to the over-budget and much-delayed F-35 itself. Rather, he cut into the plane's boosters in the Department of National Defense, which he says was so keen to get the plane it fudged the facts. The Department did not provide Parliament with complete cost information or fully informed decision-makers about the risks of this program. Ferguson repeatedly accuses defence officials of hiding the truth. The department did not provide parliamentarians with complete cost information, he says, because they were in too deep. When National Defence decided to recommend the acquisition of the F-35, it was too involved with the aircraft to run a fair competition. He goes on, key decisions were made without required approvals or supporting documentation, and there was no plan B. No plan was developed for extending the life of the CF-18 fleet in the event of prolonged delays in the delivery of a jet that is still being developed. There were problems throughout uh, the whole decision-making process. And it gets worse. Ferguson takes aim at the official response one year ago to Kevin Page, the parliamentary budget officer. Page said the real cost of buying and flying a fleet of F-35s was twice as high as the government said. We think the total ownership cost would be a little over $29 billion. So when I but at, back yeah, then, the government hotly insisted that Page was wrong, and it kept saying that through the election campaign. We're very confident of our cost estimates, and we have built in some, uh, some uh, latitude, some uh, contingency in any case. So we're very confident we're, we're within those measures. Problem. The Auditor General now says the government knew the numbers were much higher. The response to the Parliamentary Budget Office's report, that was the opportunity really for, uh, for National Defence to come forward with what the full estimated cost would be. But they didn't. Instead, the government claimed the cost would be less than $15 billion, half what the budget officer said. But the Auditor General says the government's own internal estimate a year earlier, in 2010, was $25 billion, not 15 The opposition calls that deception. But the key question to the Prime Minister is, how could he allow Parliament to be intentionally misled on the F-35s? Either he knew and it's unconscionable, or he didn't know and it's incompetence. Which is it? In the House today, the government was in retreat. The Prime Minister did not concede any deception, but he did say the F-35 file will be under new management at the Department of Public Works. The government will put that supervision in place before we proceed meaning the Defence Department loses control of it, Public Works gets it, and with its budget frozen. And we will immediately freeze the funding for the F-35s. But still the opposition hammered away at those misleading cost estimates. They were told by the Parliamentary Budget Officer, and the government's own internal figures were similar to the PBO, but they denied it, and that is misleading Parliament. Mr. Speaker, I certainly don't accept the premise. Uh, we, we do, in fact, accept the conclusions of the Auditor General. But the Liberals want much more, the Prime Minister's resignation. This Prime Minister has systematically misled the Canadian people on this issue. And he's not going to be able to get around this. He can twist and turn all he wants, but he can't. Others say that the Auditor General was too kind. I don't think he properly admonished the ministers themselves. Uh, none of the ministers uh, reflected due diligence in their responsibilities. Uh, Rona Ambrose is responsible for the integrity of the process. Clearly, she didn't ensure the integrity. I think the Auditor General gave us a report that leads us right to the doorstep of uh, the Associate Minister two ministers, one of Public Works and one of Defence, and the Prime Minister himself. But Ferguson himself could not say what the politicians knew or didn't know. 
we wouldn't have direct access to sort of things like uh, the discussions in the cabinet room and that type of thing. Which is a ticklish point because Ferguson audited the bureaucrats, not the politicians, although he is clear that decision makers did know the higher number when they gave Canadians the lower one, Peter. Terry, what about moving the program into the Public Works Department? Is that really going to change anything? Well, maybe yes, because it does come with a promise of more transparency on costs, but it doesn't create a new alternative to the F-35. It's really more of a reset, so the government can come up with a plan B if it turns out the F-35 is just not going to be affordable for years to come, Peter. All right, Terry, thanks very much. Terry's inside the Parliament buildings tonight.